welcome to Create a Life You Love with Tony G. This show actually started, the, the beginning of this show actually started in my pre, my show from today, um, Psychic Medium Tony G. And it there, there's a lot of information there where I'm going to kind of pick up from where I left off there and go into... Um, go into it here okay but before i do that i just want to thank uh rude rangers tv for picking me up picking up this show and um psychic medium tony g and streaming it on their stations on Ru ruku amazon live i always want to call it amazon prime but that's just because that's what's really you know, popular out there. It's just such a statement. Everybody just always makes it, but it's Amazon Fire Stick, I believe, and uh, possibly Apple TV and all of their um, blog talk or, or all of their podcast stations. Gosh, my words are just mum. They're like fighting with each other right now. That's a most hilarious thing to me. Okay, so um, create a life you love is all about how to we get from where we are to where we want to be. And when I first, very first started this show, I started it because um, everybody thinks people just pop up out of nowhere. They, they are these overnight sensations that, um, that um, didn't do any work, and which is not true. In the beginning, when I interviewed um, people on this show, we found out that this is something that was inside of them, possibly sometimes from childhood or when they went, they just had a knowing that what of what they were going to do, of who they were going to become, okay? And they worked on it. They just worked it every day a little bit until they became who they are. And then they they grew and expanded. So they took their passion and they turned it into their purpose and it became their life. So and with me, this the same thing could be said in many different ways. Every career I've done, I've been extremely passionate about, but I listen. OK, I absolutely 100 percent listen when I'm guided, when I hear that guidance, I listen and I follow it. I, I, I'm a yes person. Yeah, I'll do that. I'll do that. So we're going to start getting into it right away. Um, but before, again, before I do, thank you, WSCS, for airing me. Now, if you are watching me on WSCS, please know that at the 28-minute mark, this show will end on WSCS, but you can watch the rest of it on Rude Rangers um, TV or on YouTube on my station, Tony Green, T-O-N-I-G-R-E-E-N-E. -E -E. Uh, so here we go. This is all about growing and learning and bringing into our life exactly what we want. A lot of times we are not aware that our the way we feel about ourselves and our thoughts are stopping us or blocking us from bringing in what we want and who what we want and who, and who we want to be okay so where i left off with psychic medium tony g was um show up for you okay for show up as you and show up for you okay it's really important you are an amazing being you were put here with your skills your talents your wants show up with that there's something inside each and every one of us that is the reason why we're here and for each of us it's different I have people in my life that emulate me it's a little creepy to be honest just Okay, it's probably a little bit more than a little creepy. Um, but anything I say to them, within a day or two, they're claiming it like it's happening in their life. And hello, I'm psychic. I know it's not happening in your life. You're 
trying to like say your life is like my life, but that comes from them not having a good sense of self. That comes from them not thinking they're enough or perhaps they're just really obsessed with me. <laughs> well, there's a news. <laughs> well, maybe that's it. <laughs> oh, I, I hope not because it's not good to have people in your life that are that obsessed with you. Like to the point where, you know, my key comments that I'm always making, like they claim them as theirs are just silly little stupid things that, are kind of weird, but here's the thing. Be you, be the person you are. You were put here on purpose, with a purpose, for a purpose. Hey, Genevieve, how are you? I'm so grateful you're here with me, thank you. Um, so show up as who you are. The more authentic you can be about yourself. And, and listen, not everybody knows who they are. That's okay. A lot of us weren't taught to be ourselves. We, we weren't let run amok, so to say, to be the people that we are and the people that we want to be to, to, to grow into ourselves. Okay? That's okay. Learn who you are now. Learn that now and be that person. Learn what you love. Learn, learn who you want to be and show up as that person, okay? It's really important in this life. You get one go round. Don't spend it imitating anybody else, trying to be anybody else. Don't try to mimic social media people. Don't find out what makes you happy. Now, don't get me wrong. There are some 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 people on social media, and they make some funny statements that I'll repeat. Not not on camera because they're naughty, <laughs> and they're kind of naughty, and I I can't say it here. But there are some really funny people on social media, and I love their little one offs. And I'll repeat those one offs. But I'm authentically me. I do my work my way every day, all day long. And I love it. I love who I am. I love my life. I love where I am. But this isn't, it isn't necessarily about me, but it is. Because if you can't say those things, then something's gone wrong. Can you say that you unconditionally love yourself? Because the beginning of manifestation is love. The end of manifestation is a lack of love or fear. And I see it every day. I've lived it. I see it every day where people are doing well and they're riding that energy of doing well. And then something comes in that knocks them down a little bit. And do we have the resilience? Do we have the wherewithal to pick up, to pick that up and go back into that flow of winning or success, of getting back to that place where we were loving what was going on and letting go of the fear. A lot of us, it takes a minute for us to get there. It takes a minute for us to get from um, being in that space of fear because something came in and knocked us off a little bit. We have a little less funds than we want. We are in a place where we can't do what we want. We're in a space where maybe we can't, uh, our, our life is transitioning and, and then we're, we have to really dig deep into who we are and pull back out of that fear, right? So uh, show up, showing up as you is, is really important and showing up with love for you. Because all creation and the amount of creation comes from love from that space of love and unconditional love not conditioned love and i will i will say this every day all day long we see an infant and we have so much love for that infant but then all of a sudden that infant starts to get problems or we get a pet and we love our pet and then oh my dog has an attitude 
Really? Because the only person your dog or cat is learning from is you. <laughs> so look at that, right? Look at that. Okay, so um so we want but we want to be in that space where we unconditionally love ourselves. And by the comments that come out of our mouth for others and about others, if we're complaining or if we're championing, 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 championing that word, whatever that word is, when we talk to people, will tell us where we are with our life. How much do we love our life? How much do we love what's going on around us? If we get in a group of people and the first thing we're talking about is what's going wrong, dude, let that go. Chick, dude, whatever. Let it go because that's not growing. You're not growing you're stifling your growth at that moment, okay? If we get in a group of people and we talk about what's going right, what's going good, we're growing, we're flowing. And that isn't people mistake talking about the good with ego. Do you think when you're in a group of people and they say, hey, how's everything going, that they would rather hear you complain about your partner, your job, your coworker, or, I mean, and just really think about this. They would rather hear you talk about, you know, oh, you know what? This happened, that happened, the other thing happened. Now, if they don't want to hear the good, they ain't your people. Walk away. Get away from those people. If they want to be stuck down in the drudgery of it and listen to the, the negative and the bad, Get out, jump. If you have to be alone for a while, be alone for a while. Be alone for a while. Get that energy off you. Get out of that energy and get into a good place. And get around people who are talking about the good that's happening with them. Talking about the good, the successes. Because how are you going to learn about successes if nobody's talking about successes, how are you going to learn what the next step is if all anybody's talking about is how bad their partner is or what their mama did last Sunday? Who cares what your mama did last Sunday? That's last Sunday. It's gone. It's done. Get over it. Move on. And just an example. Okay. Just saying. So what we want to do is be around people and be people who show up authentically as we are, who we are, not mimicking others, not putting on false pretense, and shining so that we can show up for people and most importantly for us. Now, where I left off in my last show, what I was talking a lot about abundance and wealth. And abundance and wealth are all encompassing. Either you have it in every area of your life or it's limited in your life. And if it's limited in one area, it's probably pretty much limited in every area of your life. You want to get in a space where you're allowing in unlimited abundance in, in love, in friends, in family, and even wealth. If you get to a point where you have too much wealth, share it, but from your heart. That is where you want to be. Okay. The one of the other things I said right near the end of the last show is, and this is where I really want to start off is who's watching you? You don't know. Who's watching you? Who are you inspiring? Who are you teaching? And more importantly, what are you teaching them? Right? Now, we can't do it necessarily for those who are watching. We have to do it because it's a passion inside of us. It's something we really want to do, whatever it is. It's something that's inside of us that we're bringing out of us. But there is somebody watching. Let them watch you without limits. Let them watch you break barriers. Let them watch you teach, show, 
people how to grow beyond expectations. And again, this all starts in the heart and the head. What do I deserve? Do I love myself enough to allow myself to have this next step, this next level, this next existence? So one of the things I love to say to people is, where's your limit? Where's your comfort zone? And a lot of times, we don't think about this. We don't think about a comfort zone. We just think about what's coming in and where it is and, and all of that. But if, if, if somebody came up, if, if you could get an, an amount of money that makes you comfortable, what would that amount be? And it's probably the first amount that you thought of. whatever that amount is, that's your, that's your comfort zone. But I'm going to tell you, whatever that amount is, you've probably spent it in three seconds and you're back down to whatever your bank account is because where your bank account sits most is your comfort zone. And I'm going to give you a little trick to help you. Here's one little trick I've learned to help with your overcoming your comfort zone. If you get to a certain amount in your bank account and then you go over that amount and something comes up, take over that amount and start a new account. And never look at that account. Just keep putting stuff. And if that amount becomes uncomfortable, start another account. So some people, let's just use the amount 2000 Their comfort zone is having $2,000 in the bank at all times. And if it goes over 2000 then all of a sudden they're paying a bill, they're, they're having an expense, they're going shopping, they're doing whatever. And it's back down to 2000 When it gets up to uh, even 500 over, 1000 over, take that money, put it in another account. And don't look at that account. This one will maintain your comfort zone while this one grows. If this one gets over your comfort zone and you find yourself pulling from it, get another account. Have as many accounts as you need at your comfort zone level. Before you know it, you might have like six accounts with $2,000 each in them. And I'm just using that as an example. Now, I want to talk to you today really about creating miracles. And create, because when I end my shows, most of the time I say, remember, it's your responsibility to create the miracles in your life. What's a miracle and how do you create them? What is a miracle to me and what's a miracle to you will be two completely different things. My miracles are very, very different than anybody else's. Sometimes if I'm doing a clearing on somebody and it goes very quickly, I consider that a great miracle. I'm really grateful and I'm thanking everybody involved in helping with that clearing to get whatever needed to go to go quickly, especially if I'm working with someone. A lot of, there are miracles in a lot of different areas. And a lot of times we don't even realize that there are miracles that have to do with our career, our home, our finances, our relationships, and miracles are happening every single day. But a lot of times miracles look like everyday things that we're really not acknowledging. Because it's our thought pattern that is repeating everything from day to day, keeping that miracle going. Let's say you're in a relationship with somebody that you find simply amazing. And that's a miracle because you found somebody that you think is amazing. And you found somebody who you want to spend the rest of your life with. That's a miracle. Now, Not everybody finds that. Not everybody, they might be in a relationship. They might not find that person to be everything they ever wanted, okay? But if you do find that, it's a blessing. It's a miracle. If you have the thought pattern that this might not work out, this person might cheat or it's going to end and whatever, that's getting in the way of the miracle. But, but, but. The fact that you find this person amazing and you're still in the relationship, that's a miracle. 
beyond the little hiccups of the day. Now, when the hiccups that come in, the little problems that come in, start to override your thoughts of how amazing that person is, because it's still the same person. At the end of the day, it's the same person. It's just your thoughts about that person that have changed. It's your thoughts about the job that has changed. It's your thoughts about who you are, what you are, where you are, that change, the dynamic, and how you feel about it. So if you're in a situation where this person goes from being amazing to being the worst thing that ever happened in your life, really look at how what you weren't seeing in the beginning, A, or why your perception of that person, that job, your financial situation change, because usually it's inside of you. Every guy I ever dated that I thought was an amazing man that I thought was brilliant and had integrity, I still believe they're amazing men. I still believe they are brilliant. I still believe they have a great deal of integrity. That that wasn't the downfall of the relationships. (laughs) Usually it was another one. (laughs) Typically, sometimes. (laughs) However, we're not going to go there. That's not what this show is about today. That's not where we're going today. This show is about creating miracles, not mischievousness. So in the end, I still believe that they are amazing. I still believe they're really good people. Okay, I I believe that with all of my heart. Uh, My perception of who they are as a person did not change. How they treated me or what they did may have changed. And I have healthy boundaries, kind of, sometimes. So we have to to honor our boundaries, okay? Anyway, so back to this. What is a miracle? Day-to-day, monthly, yearly. A miracle is what we're co-creating and creating in our mind to bring into our reality or our life that we perceive as making us happy. Replay that because I can't repeat it. Even if I tried, I couldn't repeat it. So you might want to replay that. So I'm going to do a clearing right now for anybody listening or re-listening. We are creating miracles every day or we know we're creating miracles every day. I get a no on both of those. So we're going to start clearing that. Now, when we believe in our heart that we deserve what we want, And it's not wrong to want because that's where we get hung up. It's okay to want this much, but not this much. It's okay to to want, let's just say a million dollars, but not a hundred million dollars. It's not greedy to want a million dollars, but it's greedy to want a hundred million dollars. And my business can be successful to make six figures, but... Seven figures, mm, right? But that's all. That's all in our head, and it's it. It goes to our worth. If I make, if if I get a million dollars, people will still love me and honor me. If I get a hundred million dollars, that comment of greedy doesn't come from within us. That comment of greedy came without us. It came from around us. It came from what we heard as children or from others or what the the media or TV puts out there. Like these people with this money were bad or greedy. I'm going to tell you, we are limitless beings. We are beings that are put here to, it's okay for a runner to break the one minute the mile, the the mile running the, the the runner running the mile to break the time barrier, right? To not time barrier literally, but if somebody can do a one minute mile and then somebody does like a fifty second mile, that's okay. Even though they broke a record, everybody acclaims that. Everybody is like, "Oh my god, did you hear about that?" And but once somebody gets that new record, then 
everybody else knows, oh, that's possible. And then that's the new goal, right? Not They don't try to pass that goal. They're like, I'm going to hit that goal. They did that. I'm going to hit that goal. But it took the first person to break that, that one that one mile, that's how I say, it, one mile time, time frame, right? And then once the first person broke it, then everybody else matched it. They didn't break it, they matched it. But then somebody else comes along and says, I can do better than that. And they do it. And nobody questions that. It's okay for people to, in the Olympics, to get the gold, but not in life to get the gold. Guess what? Your life is the Olympics. You have one life. It's the Olympics. It's your personal Olympics. You have to own that and ride that and do that. You have to play your life like you're going for the gold every single day. It's just that simple. It's just that easy to think about it that way. Now, a miracle in your life that you create, the quickest way to create a miracle is from your heart. To have that miracle come to you, you have to believe it's possible. You have to believe not only it's possible, like the one minute mile, then everybody matched it. But you have to believe it's possible for you and you deserve it. Okay, so we're going to clear deserving, knowing things are possible for you. You know things are possible for you and you deserve them. So we're clearing that to a yes so that you get in that space where you can know you deserve the goodness of life. Because that, that, believe me, I don't care what, don't listen to naysayers. Don't listen to people who are talking about what's not possible. Get those people out of your life as quickly as possible, okay? Be around people who are making it happen on any level. People that love their lives on every level. Be around those people. It's your job to create the miracles in your life. So please work on them every single day. Until next week, go create some miracles.